Hey, what's going on guys? Code Monkey Kings here. In this video, we're going to start implementing quad pawn moves. So, uh, let's actually start with opening the terminal in the current working directory and by typing make debug. Uh, and if we compile someone around the binary executable to make sure that it's error free. Okay, so we have slight syntax inaccuracies, uh, in, in, inaccurate syntax definition here. So, let me quickly fix that. Obviously, we don't need to say the integer keywords keyword twice. Okay, sorry for for I didn't actually run this compile and run this in the previous series. I just I just forgot that. Sorry for that. So now we'll go for this generate uh, white pawns and white king castle move section, and here we want to pick up a white pawn bitwords index. So we can simply say uh, if piece is equal to equal to white pawn. Uh, so what what does this mean? So we loop over over the range of uh, pieces which serves as the indexes indices to index the bit boards uh, and. Whenever this P is equals to P, the, to uppercase P, which stands for white encoding for white pawns, and uh, from the integer perspective, this is the value of zero. Uh, so we have from zero to eleven uh, numbers here. So in this case, we can uh, uh, ensure ourselves that the bit board. Uh, which is which serves as as the copy of the current piece bitboards is actually equal to the bitboards indexed by this p or by white pawns. So j just to make it a little bit more clear. So in this case, uh, we want uh, we actually want to loop over uh, white uh, loop over white pawns within. Uh, within white pawn bitboard. Okay, so and just what I've been already mentioning in the previous expl explanation. So here uh, we're having the while loop, and as far as bitboard uh, is equal to true, actually, which means uh, so this expression means so we're looping until there are any bits available within the bitboard, which is the copy of, in our case, it's the copy of the bitboards indexed by the white pawns, or in other words, a copy of the white pawn bitboards. So in this case, we want to initialize the targets, the source square first, initialize source square. And in order to do this, we need simply to say like source square, equals and what I've been already mentioning in the previous part we simply need to get less significant first bit index to obtain uh, uh, to obtain uh, to convert it later on into human uh, readable coordinates like a2 e2 e4 and so on index of the current given bit board so this is it and also we need to initialize the target square and uh, again, like this, uh, this only uh, this would only be working for um, white pawn moves, which we'll cover just just right in the moment. But these definitions are actually needed for uh, like well, okay. So uh, let's just initialize. Let's just go for initialize our targets. Where I'm, I'm just I'm just thinking that probably even though here we definitely do look for the white pawns within white pawn big board, but actually. There is a difference between the quiet moves and uh, uh, and uh, and the capture moves. So uh, <laughs> I feel a bit a little bit lost, like how to co uh, what commentaries to provide here. What do we actually do, or just logically distinguish between like quiet moves and captures? So okay, uh, okay, I just drop it for now, and then uh, uh, maybe I'll I'll try to. Trying to find a better way of commanding that. So target square anyway uh, would it be equal? And now we need to uh, use the offset index of eight 
to be added to the source square in order to actually obtain um, the square where pawn is about to go when it goes like one square ahead. So it's not using the brick calculator the exact tables because this is the special case. So I can simply say like source square, source square, and assuming the board and the analyst, we need to say not plus but minus eight in order to move white pawns forwards. So this is kind of it. Yeah, and I've I've just realized actually that uh, the uh, that this commentary is actually okay because uh, we need uh, to look to look over the kind of source squares. Uh, regarding the white pawn big boards for all, uh, for for both uh, kind of quiet and captured, so uh, no problem here. And actually, when it comes to the quiet moves, so I just can so here I can uh, mention the quiet pawn moves section. So we want to generate quiet pawn moves. But before actually doing this, uh, I would like for us to demonstrate you how this. Uh, how this uh, source square extraction actually works. So let's make sure that good. Okay, so hold on a sec. I just uh, I'm having too many too many consoles open here. So let me limit this to the only one. Okay, so now I just want to print. Uh, I just want to print all the squares occupied by the white pawns. So. Mm, let's say white pawn and I just want to put this so uh, I would be using the Unico characters but uh, if you want to uh, recreate this tab on your site please make sure to use uh, ASCII characters uh, instead and providing this character specifier instead of in, instead of a string uh, but anyway uh, you can just watch this and it's not obvious to, to try this it's just just to give you an idea of how it works so if we can simply say square to coordinates which is an array to convert squares to human readable coordinates and uh, I'm gonna use, uh, I would be using the source square and if I just now try to ru uh, run this uh, okay, so I'm just wondering. Uh, I'm just wondering. Uh, okay, I didn't yet call the generate moves here. So generate moves and generate moves like this. So it now should print. Okay, hold on a sec. Uh, we're in the infinite loop, and that is happening because uh, we didn't yet populate. Uh, the least significant purpose bit, and that's the reason why it, grab, it, it takes only the first square on d5. So, in order, obviously, in order to uh, get rid of this, so we need to uh, pop all the set. Uh, well, let's say pop uh, least significant first bit from uh, bitboard copy this from piece bitboard copy okay and here we just can say pop bit and we're popping this from the bitboard which now represents the white pawn bitboard and we want to populate this source square so now every time we would be printing this actually extracting this least significant bit it would get populated within the next iteration in this while loop and that's how we loop over all the from squares where white pawns are occupied by the white pawns so we have this like d5 we have e4 a2 b2 c2 f2 g2 h2 so literally what we need in order to uh, actually uh, reference the source squares of, of this points. So now let's uh, provide the logic for generating quiet poem. So we need a condition here. So uh, the very first thing to consider we need to make sure that target square uh, is actually uh, that the target square is actually located uh, on board. So target square 
is less than so as far as uh, as far as y points going upwards and this might means like sort of square uh, and target square would be uh, minus uh, some sort uh, of an offset so we need to make sure the target square is actually located on board and that's the reason to say if target square is less than zero so if this is not equal to true so this is what this uh, exclamation mark stands for so target square is not uh, less than zero is, is actually false and instead of this zero we can use the square of a8 which actually represents the value of zero like this and at the same time uh, we need to, sh to make sure that the uh, get bit macro of uh, of the target square uh, is uh, so uh, we just need to make sure that the square ahead from from the current square so uh, so I, uh, we need to make sure that the target square is actually empty and uh, by saying empty it means it doesn't occupy it's not occupied either by black pieces or by the white pieces so uh, regardless of color and that's uh, that's the reason to reference our uh, occupancies array for both colors like for white and for blacks at the same time so if you just say here occupancies and both which stands for which uh, keeps track of the bit word containing uh, bits those bits been set up that where we have either white or black pieces and the square we need to check is actually the target square target square okay so this is kind of it now here within our quite poor moves we would be having up to three type of moves so the very first one uh, is known as the pawn promotion so pawn promotion section goes here so pawn promotion I just I just make a placeholder for a while uh, in order not to forget uh, in order not to forget to add a, 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 any of these parts so another case uh, so if it's not a pawn promotion it would be either either the um, casual pawn move like uh, one square one square ahead pawn move and also we'll have uh, two squares ahead two squares uh, ahead pawn move or double pawn push call it how, however you want double two squares ahead pawn move okay and now uh, the condition to make sure that we hit the pawn promotion so if the source square is uh, if the source square is actually available at the seventh rank so which means that if source square is greater or equals than a7 and less equals than h7 we are within the point promotion territory so simply saying like if the source source square is greater or equals than a7 and less equals than h7 this means that we're within the uh, uh, that we are within the pawn promotion territory and let's actually mm, take this print statement away and put it right over in here so here uh, uh, this is the placeholder for for the add move function so add move uh, into a move list so this is just a placeholder we don't have a move list and the add move function but this is just a placeholder so uh, here we can print so okay white pawn uh, I just don't really want to print this white pawn anymore so just I hope it's quite pretty clear or maybe just uh, maybe just to give an idea just the piece type so let's say pawn uh, say this pawn promotion well okay let's give it a pawn promotion name 
so phone promotion and it would be promoting to so copy and square to coordinates indexed by the target square and we need up to four uh, also the string specifier for the second uh, for the second square for the target square and also we need to uh, distinguish between up to four piece types so this would be the case for Quinn copy and oops then okay let me just first paste all of them then it would be the promoted to rook to bishop and to the knight and obviously we just now compile and run the code uh, I'm sorry, and source square is, oh, what have I done, and source square is less than h7. Obviously, we just compile around the code now, it doesn't print anything because we don't really have any pawn promotions, but if we put a pawn here on b7, we'll already see like how it works. So in order to do this I just like to reference the tricky position FEN and go back down and try to alter this a little bit. So here I will put a white pawn in and now we already have up to four pawn promotions. So you see like uh, we have this b7 to b8 queening b7 to b8 uh, becoming a rook, becoming a bishop and becoming a knight. And these are the exact four moves we're about to add into our move list if the pawn was on the seventh rank. So just just to bear this sort of a stuff in mind. And now uh, let's go for implementing the one square ahead move. So in this case what is literally enough is, sorry not I didn't mean this, what is literally enough is just to put, so uh, we are not going to be promoting to anything and just the source and the target square so for all the other pawn moves and also yeah let's uh, uh, let's say pawn uh, let's call this pawn push and another one would be double pawn push respectively so we have the pawn pushes like and let's let's inspect this so we have this d5 to d6 so here is the pawn on d5 so it goes to d6 then a2 to a3 here b2 to b3 uh it's not going c2 to c3 because of the knight because of this sort of a condition we've specified initially so we need to make sure that the this the next square after the pawn should be uh, always uh, empty in order to make this uh, quite pawn move so just to bear that in mind and the very last one g2 g3 but it doesn't yet generate the double pawn pushes like a2 to a4 uh, and things like that so now, now let's specify the condition to generate double pawn pushes so we can say if and the, uh, it consists of up to two conditions so the first condition we need to make sure that the source square uh, is located within the second rank so if source square is actually greater or equals than a2 and the source square is less equals than h2 so this is the first condition and the second condition is uh, we need to make sure that uh the square the two squares the head square is actually empty so it's just like in here copy but instead of uh referencing the target square we actually want to reference target square minus eight or in other words it means like source square uh minus 16 so kind of two squares ahead so we need to make sure that uh uh, no matter white or black pieces, so uh, referencing both occupancies, bit board, so make sure that that square is actually empty. And in this case, in this case, we can actually uh, generate uh, our moves. Uh, we can generate our moves, uh, our double pawn pushes. I'm just, uh, just a bit concerned with uh, this commentary. So here we just have this add move. 
Uh, and here we just specify the type of move. It's not really that good. So I would, I would rather drop this commentary. I think that would be just the, the best idea. So we have four promotions, one square ahead and two square heads. And here, copy and paste. So this would be the double, double pump push. And instead of printing this target square, we would be printing this target square minus eight. Okay, because just two square is ahead. Okay, so and the eight is the offset, assuming the eight to eight big board representation okay so now we have uh, up to two double pump pushes so a2 to a4 and g2 to g4 so let's let's see so a2 to a4 okay b2 is not going to b4 because of uh, this uh, square b4 is occupied by a piece uh, yeah obviously h2 point is not going anywhere because uh, it's no, no nowhere to go for it what else? G2, G4 goes quite pretty nicely, and yeah, that's that's kind of it. So let me just quickly check, uh, quickly check this logic, and if it's if it is okay, then we'll now do the same, but for for the black bones. Okay, seems to be quite pretty nice here. So let's actually alter the FPN string slightly bit. So I just want to get rid of this uh, white pawn and I want to put a black pawn here on the second rank and just alter, alter the code so that it would be generating most for black pawns. And now we have, so initially we have only this, okay, d5, d6, a2, a3, a2, a4, b2, b3, and this pawn has been removed, so, so no moves for G pawn. Okay, so if we now just change the side to blacks, it, it's not gonna be generating anything at the moment because we didn't yet specify that code. And now uh, what we need to do is kind of very simple. So um, I just need I, I just need to grab all this code here. So well, actually. Uh, actually all this code so if piece is equal to white okay yeah and then I would be just pasting in all the regards to the pawn captures so just checking out the indentation so just copy this and paste right over in here okay so uh, we need to now we need to pick up a black pawn bitboard index so equals to lowercase p which stands for the encoded value of the black pawns so this loop is the same source square is all about the same so target square now this should be the opposite direction so uh, offset to the other to the opposite direction so plus eight now uh, uh, to to keep track of that it's not going off board it doesn't have to be greater than the square of h1 i guess not greater than h1 right so it's not greater than h1 and now get beta target occupants uh, target square so this is the same now for pawn promotions we need just to make sure that black pawn is actually on the second rank okay and this is all the same and we need to make sure that for double pawn pushes the black pawn is on the seventh rank like this and also don't forget to change the direction for checking out of the empty square in case of double pawn push so this should be plus eight okay so i hope i did everything correctly here so let's try to generate some moves for black pawns okay so what we got here so we got c7 goes to c6 
c7 goes to c5 the double pawn push okay d7 to d to d6 g6 to g5 okay b2 goes to b3 not capturing because we didn't yet implement that okay and what else what else uh g2 g1 queen rook bishop and knight so also pawn promotions seems to be working quite pretty nicely well okay guys so i guess this is it for this tutorial at least i would obviously go and check the code one more time and if any if any issues would appear i would definitely show you what to fix in the next part but i but i believe that this should be actually kind of fine so this is it from my side and in the next video uh, we're going to be generating pawn captures for both white and black pawns so see you in the next video until then and take care